Thank you so much for tuning in for this, our third episode of Meet the Furies, the show where every other week I, Zeke Lugmeier, voice of Fury and social media manager of Raw Fury, talk to our lovely developers that are not internal to Raw Fury, but are the people who have made the games that we help them release. And this week we're joined by none other than the ever-talented pixel art master Brian Heemskirk of Massive Damage Games, who just put out Star Renegades just a couple of weeks ago. Brian, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I am uh, save for all the stress that getting the stream actually up and running and on yeah. on sort of time. We're, we're a couple minutes late, but we'll just go five minutes five minutes later. Um, other than that, I'm very good. I am in good spirits, and I've had a good week so far, even though it's only been two days. <laughs> Thank you for asking. There's a lengthy answer for you. I'm also sad because, you know, I am Zeke, the mic arm, the mic for short, if you want. Forgot to open my water, so I'm going to have to do this really awkwardly. With, with you have to buy like a clamp or something just to hold on to that mic. You know, last week I was so incredibly pre- prepared I had even I like I had my bottle next to me and I had unscrewed the lid. Is that a word? This thing. Yeah, the yeah the cap or the lid. Yeah, the cap. I had unscrewed it just perfectly so that it wasn't unsafe, but I could uh, just so easily get it off with one hand and uh, thus could seamlessly have a drink of water. This week, not that, so much. Uh, <laughs> was that carbonated water? It is indeed. Uh, yeah, I figured so. You're from Europe initially, so this is true. I was surprised. I was surprised when I was in Europe for Gamescom how everybody drank carbonated water. It is. I used to hate it until uh, until like three years ago, and this is a little TMI. But since we're on the topic, the reason I started liking it is because uh, like two years ago I got gastritis, which is like it sounds like you're pooping a lot, but you're not. It's more like your stomach, your stomach is very irritated and bubbly, which, yeah. if you have nothing, makes it sort of feel like you want to throw up a lot, and you don't. It's just like gas. So I realized that drinking carbonated stuff made that better, and I can't drink. I don't like drinking soda too much, so that's when I started with carbonated water. Gotcha. There, there we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's maybe get in. I'm I'm not liking how this show is going so far. No, 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 that's all good. That's all good. Right on. All right. Again, please let me know if the music is too loud, if I'm too loud, if Brian is too too soft spoken, and I'll tell him to be more firm. Um, okay. But yes, let's maybe dive into it. Brian Keemskirk of Massive Damage Games. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You are the lead artist of Massive Damage Games, but yeah. you know there must be so much more to say. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I'm the lead artist of Massive Damage Games for most of the time that I worked there. I was the only artist, um, which makes being the lead artist kind of funny. Because, but halfway through Star Renegades, we picked up another artist to help with uh, all the technical art, pulling in the animations into Unity and Matt, who was a great help. Um, but in regards to the pixel art, I did probably 99% of all the pixel art for Star Renegades. Backgrounds, characters, um, all of the animation, and, well, the sprite animation, um, except for a couple explosions that Matt did and a couple of particle effects and whatnot. Um, yeah, so I've been working at Massive Damage for four years, almost, well, four to five years, depending on how you count it. I am shaking my head because it seems absolutely ludicrous, insane to me that one person have done most of this. Like, again, these streams mostly, you know, it's me being your vehicle to get to know these companies. But I don't always know. I did not know that you were more or less responsible for 90% of the art in the game. That is. Well, yeah, I came on. So cool. It was kind of odd. I I came into Massive Damage halfway through Halcyon 6. Mm. So with Halcyon 6, they had another artist, uh, Juan Carlos Salon, great artist, who left halfway through development, and then I had to kind of match the style and finish the rest of the game. Wow. Um, 
and then I came in. Star Renegades is is kind of my baby, and I was I was a little bit more because previously all of the jobs that I had in the industry, I was always working with another artist, matching their style, and this was the first project that I kind of helmed, and I knew that I could do it mostly myself, and I kind of wanted to just for this game, just to see what I was capable of. Um, well, apparently, really fucking miracles. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, I kind of missed that old game cohesion too, right? Like when you have Super Nintendo or NES or like Genesis games, oftentimes the team were, were really small and mm. that created a really different feel to games because right there's on. a specific cohesion that comes when there are, it's very specific people's visions. And then as teams scale up, it's harder and harder to maintain a consistent vision for the game visually when you have more people doing parts of it there's more right like, likely slight mismatches and stuff yeah that makes perfect sense like if you're more or less alone like in anything you do i suppose like whatever your output is will be more of an extension of your voice and what you're about it's sort of i guess say we were 10 people handling the raw fury social media account instead just to draw a parallel to myself i guess yeah. it would be less of my voice than it is right now right now it's very very if you're following it it's very much like an extension of my own personal twitter at times <laughs> but yeah back back to you but all right so you joined massive damage at uh Hal is it i'm sorry i botched halcyon. it halcyon no, no, no. i'm like helicon halcyon yeah, yeah, yeah. the pre the previous title from massive damage for those of you unfamiliar yeah. Uh, and like, how how many years ago is that? Maybe you already mentioned, but well, it's it's kind of um, so. I've been full time working at Massive Damage for four years, but it's almost five if you include the time that I worked on Halcyon Six. Right. So on. the pre-release of Halcyon Six was kind of a year that I did before I worked there full time on contract. Mm. I actually was on parental leave. And I had taken parental leave after the birth of my third child. And I was like, I need a break, all this. And then within two weeks, I was contacted to do it. And I was like, fine. And then I ended up working all of my parental leave. Right. When I <laughs> get out, they keep pulling me back in. Yeah, I know. Video games, man. Can't be with them. Can't be without them. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Exactly. But all right, so going back a little further, so four or five years at Massive Damage, but mm -hmm. I, I reckon that you've been doing pixel art for longer than that. I would have to no, get. I, you have not? No, I've been doing art for longer than that. And I right have on. like, I did a little bit of pixel art. I guess, I guess it depends on how you view it. Not officially. I've done art my whole life, but um, I guess when I was a little kid, I right used on. to... I used to redraw on my own icons for games. There was a program Ooh. called Icon Master. Really? Which, yeah, there was a program called Icon Master. I think it came with Windows 95. And I used to like redraw all my icons for like King's Quest or The Dig or whatever game we were playing at the time. I would just have my own vision for it and then I would draw my icon of it. But I didn't do much pixel art. I worked at Little Guy Games and some of the games, because it was like first generation iPhone, mm. were kind of pixel art because right. you were so limited in resolution that it was yeah, yeah, pixel yeah. art, but not kind of officially. Right on. That's so cool. So I guess uh, like before joining Massive Damage, would you say that you know, pixel art was something near and dear to you? Like, were you big, like, SNES, Mega Drive, or I guess... Wait, yeah, it is still SNES. It was Genesis or Mega Drive, either or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a huge game. I have too many games. I have thousands of games. But, like, Super Nintendo has always had a special place in my heart. And, I mean, old right 2D on. ages better than bad 3D. So I it's kind of like early 3D. 30, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like the whole Super Nintendo to PlayStation One pixel art. It's kind of you know, and you get the Castlevanias on PlayStation One, and you mm. have even like Breath of Fire three and four, or on Super Nintendo Final Fantasy six and Terra Enigma and Illusions of Gaia and games like that. They just like I always love them, and I, I played too many games, so I have just like a huge catalog of references from all these games for pixel art to take from my head. You know, and just plug them in. Right on. That's awesome. Do you have like? I guess we're getting a little. We're scrambling the order here, but now. Oh, I can, you can I, go in order I, or whatever. I, it's I can't, can't help myself, but like, do would you say, like, 
what's your favorite game that you have not made yourself, like pixel art wise, or maybe just art wise? You you don't have to limit oh. yourself to pixel art, I suppose. No, oh, well, I guess limiting myself to pixel art probably helps the flow of the conversation. Mm. I guess um, I don't know. I, I, there's lots of games that artistically inspire me, but like mm. um, definitely. Oh, when it comes to pixel art, I mean, um, a lot of the work of really specific artists like uh, Snake Pixel that mm. did Owlboy and, Ooh, yeah. you know, which had a really nice art style for pixel art. And so did, um, I mean, I'm, I'm always into the classics. So like Final Fantasy VI and, mm. and stuff like that's a big one for me and Chrono Trigger, obviously. And um and I love the like Street Fighter Three Third Strike. I'm a huge Street Fighter player, so it's like Beautiful those animations. And the, it's the pixel art's so good in that game. Right on. Are you familiar with the the, the sister, I guess, friend like uh, fighting franchise, Guilty Gear? Oh yeah, that is uh, that is I, my I, personal favorite. I have favorites. an arcade machine I literally built in my garage. Oh really? Just for playing fighting games. So that's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, there's so there's so much beautiful beautiful pixel art, and I like just to again like pitch in a little bit to the conversation. Like I found it so I was so happy, and that's many years ago now. But sort of you know in the early like the early golden age, I guess you can call it of indie games, like like the Xbox marketplace and also mm -hmm. mobile catching up. When you realize like oh. This is now a viable style again because if you're a lone creator, you probably can't churn out like AAA quality 3D, but you can make a beautiful, you know, 2D experience. And you know, there's a, like I remember in those years, like there was still some 2D games coming out, obviously, and pixel art too, but it was not very common. Yeah, so it's crazy to see how it's grown too. Like the standards definitely increased in what's acceptable oh, yeah. for pixel art and it you know and it's i think it's kind of funny too because especially with uh star renegade some people had you know trouble running the game or whatnot and they're like it's a it's a pixel art <laughs> game why is it hard to run and i'm just like the funny thing is, is i've done 3d and stuff too and i i like you know mocking around with some 3d stuff right now and it's like yeah. it's amazing that the game would be actually considerably smaller than star renegades because <laughs> when you have like for instance, one of the bosses, he's like, I think he's like 400. It's like 300 by 400 pixels or something like that for right one on. frame, and he's like 500 frames. So it's like, and you animated all of them, you maniac. Yeah, and it's like 12. <laughs> it's like 12 40 98 by 12 40 98 at, uh, atlases. So like tons of sprite sheets. So we're just killing your your texture memory on this game, <laughs> left, right, and center with just like so many sheets of sprites where it's kind of we we blew out in that way which the, is it's just funny the gamers were like pixel art can't be uh, heavy on your computer and you were like hold my pixelated beer <laughs> <laughs> something like that that's a that's how i'm gonna imagine but yeah like i don't know if that's really what you were trying to say i would argue that you know a game like star renegade is actually also sort of pushes the standard forward because like obviously i'm part of raw fury and this is a very biased thing to say but as zeke lugmeyer the human being i genuinely think it's some of the most beautiful like pixel art animation backgrounds everything that you know i've seen come together in like a single cohesive title i i'm kind of blown away because the i mean that, i think that's more of the consensus than i was expecting Hmm. when you because you just work on something right and you spend what is it this has been like three solid years of art for me yeah. day in day out um and you release it into the ether and you hope that people will like it right yeah. and i was i was super anxious with the first teasers that we did and the first trailers and all of that and then you know just hoping because I, th I think there's kind of a standard in the industry where it's like what you can tolerate and it's a yeah. one to ten ratio where for every 10 negative for every 10 positives if you have one negative you'll be okay <laughs> but as soon as it starts going the opposite way then it gets really hard to bear because it's just it hurts you a lot to see that negativity um and on the art front i definitely think we've come across on much higher ratio than mm. than 10 positives or one negative i 
Generally, the negative stuff I've seen is mostly from people hating pixel art, and I, I can't do anything there. So, <laughs> uh, sorry, bud. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I try my best, but uh, I'm not looking to convert people, just hopefully inspire them. Um, but yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you that, you know, it's uh, it's interesting to see the vision come to life, the backgrounds, the characters. There's some things that we kind of pushed out that... A lot. Of, I mean, obviously, Octopath is a pretty big inspiration yeah. from the setup and whatnot. And but we had before we went into a two D three D hybrid, we had already done so much animation work. And when you look at Octopath, it generally has like five frames per second animation, and mm. uh, most of it is just effects overlaid without. And we just went nuts on animation. I can get into that in a bit. You 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 went like casuals. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. we're gonna do this for real. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can. I'll walk through an animation set in a bit um, to kind of show what goes into a single character. Yeah, but it's can't um, wait. It makes me very nervous from a technical standpoint on this stream. But I'm sure we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that very soon. But yeah, like I in guess case, I'll just ramble past it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess like uh, like yeah, I think before Star mm. Renegades, like Octopath, I suppose would be the game that comes to mind in terms of like sort of you know, pushing the the pixel art standard forward a bit. Because, like, that game ensnared so many just because it looked like... I guess, and that might be me be, being on the inside of the in industry. To me, it was like, I've never seen this before. But it totally makes sense. Like, it's the same... It was the modernization of pixel yeah. art, right? To some extent. Not, not that there's something not modern about just blowing out things yeah. that exist in pixel art or the traditionalism because sometimes i mean there's a lot of beautiful games out there moonlighter uh, and um, hyperlight drifter all tons of really beautiful games that keep to a specific aesthetic what octopath really did was um mixture of modern technical uh kind of treatment visual treatment with pixel art so having normal maps having real-time lighting having kind of all of that overlaid mm -hmm. and everything assembled in a 3d space yeah exactly. and still giving off the aesthetic of pixel art while kind of reinforcing it all differently than we'd seen before the feeling of a modern game yeah well having depth of field and you know exactly um, vignettes post a lot of post-processing stuff like that and that's i mean we've seen kind of hints of that with mm -hmm. other games that have yet to be released but um yeah it's a cool it's a cool hybrid visual approach so yeah we obviously took inspiration from Octopath, but mm. um, more so from. But we had already blown out specific image systems when we were running. We're working primarily 2D, like, and yeah, I'll get into that. But our characters, like, every unit in the game has like animations for their idle, for an execution state when they're getting ready to attack. I have hit back and hit down, which is something that I pushed for, so that when enemies hit them, it looks like a combo because you kind of get like back back down right like that kind of thing Oof. in the animation which i wanted combos and i wanted things that made it look like that so i was really i pushed for that at the beginning but it, obviously it scales out badly in animation there's exhausted states there's an activated state then there's multiple attacks and there's deaths for every unit so it kind of like it's a, a lot of animation per character you're making me nervous just because i know producers like i know at least one producer definitely more than one and the, just like hearing you say this makes me go like oh this is uh, are we scoping too far is this uh, maybe we can settle for less i think oddly enough i pushed so for cool. a couple of things but it was the kind of the opposite they were kind of like always oh can we add more and then i would be kind of fighting i'm like this is going to scale badly so this is more and we still we still scaled badly for some things because it's like adding a new character to the game is so much work. Right on. But this is actually a really nice segue. You were kind of touching upon it already. And I saw some questions in chat. We will try to fit in some questions and I'll I'll remember them. Some of them will be covered in the questions I've prepared. But I also try to keep the conversation flowing. So I can't promise that I'll catch anything, everything chat want to ask. But the, I will do my best. But yeah, so diving into Star Renegades specifically, how sort of, how did you go about to like create the sort of style and uh, yeah, the visual feel for the game? Like off, obviously you mentioned Octopath as a big inspiration, but like 
like for anyone who's seen both of them, they're quite different when it comes to, you know, visual aesthetic, style. Yeah. yeah, aesthetic. Yeah. That's good word. Um, yeah, I can make a touch on that. It's really, um, there's a couple of things that kind of merged together to make. Really, it was a time of panic. We had done a, a kind of failed game pitch that we had spent six oh, yeah. or seven months working on prior to this Star Renegades. And I, then it was literally me and Peter were like, we need to push out a pixel art classic trailer in like a month. So he mocked it all up and I had like two weeks to animate and assemble it all in After Effects. If you if you Google on YouTube the Star Renegade, just go to Massive Damage and see the very first Star Renegades trailer. That was just me hacking together in After Effects on the shortest <laughs> time frame. So it's kind of weird when you build an art style like that because you kind of have to... I mean, I can show the earliest inspirations for it. It's in the art book if anyone buys Ooh. it but like because if you you can go and get the art book on the steam store go buy the but art book it's, it's uh it, yeah we kind of we walked through very quickly a few pixel art styles at the time the no um no outline pixel art was pretty in right it's kind of popularized initially by sword and sorcery and it went out a bit from there just not having outlines on characters or things like that, which is different. That would be probably the most different thing about this game versus like Final Fantasy VI or traditional Japanese Super Nintendo games or PlayStation games that they would often have outlines around characters and our mm. game doesn't. Um, right the other thing is we wanted to be kind of an alternative because at the time and still currently, there's just way too many post-apocalyptic dark games that were kind of brooding so what we really wanted was not everything to be desolate but to feel really beautiful right like to have every background mm. have personality and be beautiful and uh always have the wind going which was a really stupid <laughs> decision on my part at the beginning <laughs> because always animating a wind in every cycle can be pretty annoying and there's lots of characters and enemies with capes and, then and it's be just like be like one Sorry, person in the Steam reviews. Like, excuse me, but the, this background seems to be inside, yet the wind is blowing very strongly. I I actually joked about always having like a big fan on the <laughs> left side of the screen, just like as an asset blowing, love, so that you always explain that. the wind. That is that is really funny. It could be. A it also made it so we couldn't flip units, right? Yeah. For enemies. So if we did ever had to do anything like that, we had to do an alternate version with reverse right. wind. Yeah, that is that is tricksy. I commend <laughs> you for for uh, going through with it anyway. <laughs> that is amazing. So, were there like, do you have any like specific main influences that you can just mention? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I honestly enough, oddly enough, I think. Uh, Chrono Trigger was a big one for me. Mm. Um, and even the, the traditional 2D Castlevania games, I think if you look at some of the sprite work for the characters and the enemies, they might come mm. off more like classic Castlevania than they, but in an RPG setting, which you don't typically see. Right on. Um, and yeah, uh, Metroid's always a huge influence for me. I always cram classic. in Metroid everywhere I can. It's like <laughs> one of my favorite series of all time. Um, Very cool. But yeah, visually, it would be kind of those. It's kind of funny because I didn't play Hyper Light Drifter until partway through development. Um, right on. So it didn't impact the visual style as much as people think it did. Because mm. it's like even the Titan, I was kind of looking at like Sentinels from X-Men mixed with the creature from Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. Right. And then it just ended up looking kind of similar to... And I was like, oh, I didn't... Because I, I played Hyper Light Drifter after all of that. And I was like, oh, it's a great game. But it wasn't kind of one of my initial references. It came in a bit later. That's awesome. Thank you so much. But yeah, I think we'll move that one later. But I guess let's get into it. We're going to try. Sure. And I want to preface this by saying this has worked half of the times we have tried it. So what we're going to do next is that Brian is going to screen share with us and we're going to go a little bit and check under the hood on how to put these fantastic animations together. I hope you got Unity to load because <laughs> that was... No, I didn't get Unity to load, but I can show a visual <laughs> example, unfortunately, kind of... Right on. Behind. I can't do as much behind the scenes because Unity is still loading, but I was hoping to. I but don't... I have a video kind of like all the composed backgrounds so I can kind of talk about oh, that's... how I build them and then More than uh, I just need to grab, grab 
grab that one video. Right on. I will be good. So you want me to start my screen share? Uh, yeah. So maybe let us know, what are we looking at here? Oh, this is just a background. So, I mean, there's tons of backgrounds for the games. Background has animated elements. Hmm. Um, and then what I would typically do, so I kind of animated all the individual things, the water flowing. So I had to make the kind of water run and connect from location to location as it goes down, as it drips through the eyes. The tree right uh, disperses leaves from time to time. And then weird, like, bat-like creatures come out of the eye occasionally for just... So these are kind of like the elements that I put together in the background. And then when we assemble, here I got this video that pull up that uh, I have. So when we assemble the background one one in uh, 2DX, let me find that background. Where is it? Should be somewhere in here. Sorry, I have all of the backgrounds in one video. So <laughs> that, that is amazing. Oh, that is so useful for a situation like this. Yeah. So anyways, um, I kind of have specific camera positions that I have to work with, mm. with the background. And I I had certain rules that I set in place to try to keep a, keep a specific aesthetic because one big thing that I wanted to do was keep pixel sizes the same consistently right. across the scene, which is hard to do because if you're setting things further away, obviously the pixels will get smaller. Mm. So I was trying to create a rule of thumb visually so I can have it have that consistent um, pixel resolution. We worked at like, I worked at specifically uh, 640 by 360 for my canvas. And the reason I worked at that resolution was uh, it multiplies perfectly at 2x to 720p, 3x to 1080p, 4x to 1440p, I think 8x to 4k. Right so on. you can perfectly integer scale and get uh, flawless crisp pixels. And we also kind of retooled crisp. a um, pixel art anti-aliasing solution mm. to uh, still have you know nice square pixels, but have anti-aliasing in the scene. And that was right all on. lucky. So that was um, a cool thing to do. But yeah, that's so that's kind of one aspect. So I would draw the backgrounds in Photoshop at that resolution. Mm. I would pull them into Unity and reassemble the scenes. Um, and just uh, build them essentially in 3D. When it comes to units, so you can see with units, there's just like, so this unit's almost 400 frames um, in my timeline. So there's tons of different things for each unit. So for this, there's his idle animation. Mm -hmm. So the basic animation that idles the unit. I had a walk for them just so they can do more powerful slams. So I have a, a mm -hmm. forward walk and a backwards walk. For it, and they have to be different. You would think they'd be the <laughs> same, but it's all of the secondary elements that don't work going backwards that they do forwards. Right on. Uh, getting hit backwards animation, hit down mm. when the unit gets hit down. Then this is a slam attack. Um, yeah, yeah. Then there's the frost shield. Unfortunately, because it's loading into RAM, it'll be a bit choppy in Photoshop. Oh, that I think I. In higher I think that's Sorry, absolutely. I think that's absolutely fine since we're you know watching. It's like sort of image by image in yeah, Photoshop. I'll, I'll, fill the, I'll fill the screen so that. Uh, and this unit had different states for the shield, so it could turn the shield on fire or freeze it. This is like a jump slam attack. Hmm. Um, so and I'm, then, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm curious, like, how is the process sort of like? You obviously animate, like, it's all animated by hand, like, frame by frame. But, like, how, yes. how much can you uh, sort of get away with for free? Because I reckon you don't have to redraw the whole unit every single frame. No, right? no. So you would, but oh, you wow. often have to, you often have to redraw components. So, mm. and the other thing is when you use, right. so if you look at Photoshop, let's say I do a perspective distort on this, it gets really wonky really yeah. quick. So yeah, you yeah. essentially, you can do distortions on it, but you have to redraw it afterwards on right. a frame by frame basis on anything that gets right. unclean. So you'll have assets, then they'll get like this line that was once beautiful is now wonky. Mm. So I would go in and I would just redraw these lines, right clean on. up these edges. On, and if it was a really fast moving frame, I might not bother as much yeah, with that, some of that. Wh whatever. <laughs> Yeah, well, with some frames like move really quickly. You'll see maybe like a jump or something. You'll have a few mo few frames where it might have a little bit of that 
go in yeah. where I didn't bother to clean it up, but it's flying across the screen, so you never pay attention to Isn't it. Isn't that like an old uh, animation trick also to like let lines be a little smudgy in like uh, movement animations to make like the mo- movement more expressed or similar? Oh, I mean, some styles are based around that, and you look at like. Um, I used to love the show Home Movies, and that had like Ooh. squiggle lines on everything. But right it uh, it's kind of yeah, some of the stuff has things like that. So yeah, our units have lots of animations. They have kind of effect and attack animations on top of that. This is the I have this expanded out because this is the kind of range that this unit can attack. So when it does like crazy laser attacks, yeah. Um, I did a lot. You know, the funny thing is, I really probably should have reused the smoke effects more, but almost every time I redrew the smoke <laughs> effects on every new oh. unit, so I would just draw new smoke <laughs> effects. I don't know why, but sometimes I could have taken it, but it's not even worth looking for the file. I just would just draw yeah, something I'll new just, for it. I'll just draw new smoke, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, this is kind of the gist. So I would spend time just working on whatever the unit is doing all of the sets and of course we have uh, i guess i'll show the uh the art hmm. book page for that but oh, we made miniature map versions of every enemy too and then they're <laughs> animated as well and that's kind of funny um where's the art book Just don't show it all go go buy the art no, no, book I'm, on I'll steam i'll have it on my i'll have it on my <laughs> other screen and I'll just pull up yeah, yeah, yeah yeah no don't you don't actually I'll have to worry about it i'm sure i'm sure uh, all these lovely people are gonna go and buy the art book no i'm not i'm not expecting it it's a nice art book though You're i mean right. i have the pdf for it um it? it's kind of that was a fun image i just did for fun my spare time but uh let me scroll down here do i find it because i have a big sheet of all the enemies right from on the map version and it's it's kind of funny to yeah see. yeah so, cute they are yeah the, like they kind of have that sort of like tamaguchi look maybe that, that i i specifically based it off of that the map i was very much intentionally basing it as much as I could off of uh chrono trigger just so from awesome. the scale perspective because i remember here we go this is the that page but you have kind of these super cute versions of all of these bad guys um they're so cute I know they're, they're, some of them are like I'm so sure. funny when you see them in the little tiny map versions. You have so few pixels to kind of represent their essence, so you had to yeah. make do with what they were. I'm sure someone at Raw Fury is watching right now, and Jesus Christ, we really need to make Star Renegade Tamaguchis. That would be so fucking <laughs> sick. <laughs> just have them. Yeah, this right. guy's trying to kill this guy. Oh, you, do, you just have your little, guy. your little angry soldier who's like frustrated, and then you just feed him like a couple of times a day, make sure he doesn't die. <laughs> so this is kind of like, the, I mean, the art book's a pretty good overview. You can mm. kind of see all of the work that goes into the tile sets Wow. versus, um, so I made the tile sets for the maps mm. and all of that as well, and the animated units for the maps. So um, are the tile sets also made in Photoshop, or is those are those drawn more in a 3D space? Uh, they're done in Photoshop, but they're assembled mm. through a program, and then we right. we, assemb- we have ways to make it 3D. And I had to kind of work out how to draw the... Each of the land masses have skirts and stuff that mm. hold them upright. It's a. I wish I could have showed you in Unity, because it's kind of a gong show. Um, right. But the art book has... part two at some point, hopefully with Unity art- working in our favor. The art book kind of has a, a big array of like backgrounds, sketches, um, kind of initial concepts and stuff that uh, you can kind of see all the work that goes into. And this is like maybe 5% of the art of yeah, three right. years. So it's like I could have just jammed this thing full, but it would have taken too long to make the art book. Because this right here kind of touches upon a question I had, which was... Uh... Like how, and I I talk a lot about processes, but I guess because there's a lot of things actually being made and uh, it's quite hard to wrap your head around like how, but like how's the start when like how, how does it, you, how do you go from like an idea to like actually designing a character? Like uh, do you start just uh, drawing out the design and then you start, you know, putting um, the pixels? I can kind of show you, down. we actually start from pixel art first all right because that's kind of how you're gonna work and interact that's how i start so peter mm. would make me a list and he would have suggestions 
right? And then a bunch of references of kind of what he's thinking. Right on. So he might have like six or seven really different uh, characters. So I can show you this, but oh, I'll open. Please. Let's see, one second. Open this one. Um, and you can kind of see how the regular characters are drawn, and I can do the same for the enemies. Mm. Um, so so we kind of have, these are all like the initial concepts for units and stuff that I would right mock on. up just to get a feel, you know, get a pose going on, try to figure out yeah. what, uh, what we wanted to do with a specific unit. Um, right and on. then, yeah, you know, talk about which ones we were trying to get into the game, which ones we, we didn't yet. Maybe we will at some point in time. Um, but these are the characters. And then I would kind of just draw them and get an interesting pose, try to figure out what to do with them there. Mm. Um, and then when it came to enemies, I did something similar because you want it to mesh with the rest of your units, right? So Yeah, would you know like, Would you know the like unit abilities before designing the character or would that sort of grow out from the visual design? I guess either or could I happen. used to we kind of changed it midway through the process mm. because what was happening is I was just kind of animating for about 70 to 80% of the project, any move that I thought would be cool for a unit. <laughs> so if it just came to me and I thought it'd be so, really interesting, so much power. Then I, would, I would just do it. But then it got to the point where uh, Gary and who is Matt was pulling in these animations into unity and setting them up with timelines and effects and stuff. They were getting like, Gary kept changing what the move was, and then they'd have to think mm. of a way to retool my animations in a way <laughs> to make it work. So this, this actually, a, you'd be surprised how many attacks I fully animated that aren't even in the game. Right on. Where it's like, it's crazy how. And anyways, yeah, this is a fair bit of that. Tweet at Gary um, right now to release the Brian cut of the game. No, 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 <laughs> it's not definitely not worth that. Um, but yeah, like I mean, I have full animation sets for essentially all of these units but uh right on. it's it's kind of you know and some of the characters were just ridiculously fun for me to work with like i love bentley bentley is the one i spent the most time like I, I have tons of sketches in my sketchbook of him and i actually modeled him in 3d for it's very cute fun he, uh, yeah well he strikes me as a character that would be very sketchable like if you're in a meeting and you're just like oh, 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 i came out of a desire yeah, yeah, it came to me as like, um, I loved Robo and Chrono Trigger and Urshin Fire 4, and I just wanted my game to have, well, not my game, but like, from the visual side, I really wanted something in the game that had that kind of feel of, uh, ro like, that robot character you can kind of relate to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was just so much fun to animate, I just had him like flipping through the air and going mad, uh, <laughs> it looks so so cool and cute at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. And anyways, like this is all kind of some behind the scenes stuff for the yeah. art, but there's lots of stuff that goes into all the characters. And then there's the portraits and animating the portraits and all of that as well. So. Right. What would you say, like, and now not speaking about like a specific character, we can definitely talk about that too, but like in. Like either for a character or for a background, what would you say is like the most challenging like part of like your job? Oh man, uh, I guess it's just if you have problems getting your mind around it, it's like mm. a day to day thing. I, I wouldn't say that there's any part that is overly hard unless it's just I'm trying to do something something and I'm not in the mood for it. So right if on. it's like some days I just didn't feel like doing maps and I wanted to do like characters mm. or animations and then other days it would be the opposite way around. And then if you're fighting against, you you have, sorry, oh, no you worries. have to do very specific assignments. Like you need this for this release or this version or whatnot. We hear it Roll Fury. You're <laughs> and you're not, it's not what you're motivated to do. Then sometimes that could be hard to kind of force your motivation to get through it. Right. Um, the, the bosses could be a bit difficult because just because of their scale, because mm. Um, dealing with that many pixels, like what size is this guy? Where is it? Image size. So like he was 559 by 300 pixels for his sprite box, Jesus. which is pretty large. So having to accommodate a really large sprite is really hard because there's just so much cleanup on frames. Hmm. The smaller sprites aren't as bad, but I also made a lot of bigger units. I don't know why. I just kind of like them, I guess. They're 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 fun. I liked the result of them. It wasn't like I wasn't motivated to work on, but they do take a fair bit large, longer. Right on. Yeah, because I'm 
I'm still amazed because obviously you should all follow Brian on Twitter. Like how you managed to churn out, you know, like private for fun pixel art still at like. Oh, like you're talking about my viral Lisa Sue gif or my other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah like the Aces one and the, or like the birthday one for Jacqueline. Oh, the Atoma crops as well. Yeah, like, exa exactly. Yeah, it no. just blows. I'm like, this looks like something that would take weeks for a team to do to me. But here, like, and I'm sure they still took a fair bit of time, like, to put together, even if just for fun. But, uh, but still, like, it's so, so crazy to me that you're able to do this, like, on your own. Yeah, it's I, so I impressive. Kinda... I didn't really realize, and I don't know if it's going to continue to be this way when I move on to, like, if I have to work in other styles that maybe mm. I'm a bit slower at, but when it comes to, I don't know, like, everywhere I worked prior to Massive Damage I, and, and working at Massive Damage, I actually always worked under another artist, and then I had to match their style, but it usually turned out that I would output about two to three times faster than them mm. in their style, and yeah, that know. was not intentional or something it was just something i noticed when i switched from job to job to job right or when i i worked at one studio where i had to work on lots of different games i ended up working on every project they had going wow. because they had four games or whatnot going and they just <laughs> had so much art that they needed but their other artist wasn't fast enough and then i simultaneously ended up working as assisting on <laughs> art for all of those games so I guess the answer to the question, like, how do you do it? Is like, oh, I'm just faster than everyone else. <laughs> well, I, you know, I see flaws and stuff in my work. And maybe there's points where I could stop and clean up things a bit more and whatnot. That would be better think, in some regards. But it, people don't seem to notice. And I'm like... I definitely don't. Yeah, but it, it's like you could always polish to the moon. So, but for sure. Yeah. Um, sorry, but yeah, I was going to... Oh, no. maybe run other enemy and stuff on here you continue to ask questions go go for it i guess uh i'm gonna just scramble these a little bit also like because uh, you're you're very fast but like how would you say on average like let's take this enemy how long does it take from like start to finish to like just say we have added a new enemy to the game it's done well there's there's kind of different phases so my component mm. I usually take, if it's a regular size character, mm. the base character set will take me maybe a day and a half to two days. Right on. Um, for So like maybe that's what, 10, 10 to 16 hours, somewhere in there. And wow. then, but that doesn't include the portrait or the uh, map sprite mm. or, so the, the portrait can take me anywhere from three hours to half a day. And then the animation for a portrait can take another half a day. Or so there's there's things that so it's roughly maybe maybe up to a week of work for a character. Right bosses on. are a bit different. So like the w hardest bosses, I think the shortest boss took me three days to do the full animation set, and the longest boss took me a week and a half. Right on. That's very accurate. Well, not accurate in the way that it's correct, because obviously you tell me. But <laughs> I mean, it's very it's a very specific answer. I, I I like that. Yeah. Interesting. So. Yeah, but then when I take it, so it's like Matt usually takes the animation that can take like up a week, up to a week to get all the um, like particles and stuff on it, get it rigging the way that it should in Unity, um, setting all of that up. And then Peter has to do all of the writing stuff for a mm. character. So it's like all the campfire dialogues, all of that. So there's there's other aspects of it as well that I don't, I can't control for as much, but. Right on. I don't know how, how long they would have to speak to the length of that. I can just talk about kind of the base pixel art that goes into it. Yeah, I mean, that's why you're here. But that's, yes. That is still incredibly impressive. Like, it's such high-quality work. And uh, I know I, I, I might be repeating myself a little bit in praising you, but I truly, truly mean it. Like, it's insane to me. And uh, I'm sure uh, to a lot of artists around you, they'll be like, motherfucker, churning out, churning out a character a week. My my coworkers often joke that I have a time vortex, but <laughs> because I'll come back from the weekend and I'll actually have played a game, and I have three kids, and I exercise. This is this is sounding I highly suspicious. I I'm yeah, not, not gonna I, lie. I'm I secretly have a twin, and then I <laughs> switch between them so that I can get twice as much. Time. That's the way but to do that's, it. That's kind of how it's worked for me. Um, 
But I don't know, you know, maybe I'll switch games and stuff and at some point in time and I'll be a lot slower on that game. It's always possible. Well, at least for now, I really hope not. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fine. I don't know. Like, I just work the way I work, right? And then hopefully it all pans out. Right. I don't know if uh, we're running low on time, so I don't know if I'm... I'm fine to talk to whenever, but I don't know if you want to get through any specific questions or whatnot. Yeah, we can we can keep going for a little bit. Sadly, chat seemed to have died for me. Oh wait, no, hold up, no, never mind. <laughs> I I hadn't uh, brought up the pop out chat. I have a few more questions, and since we d did have a little bit of a stumbling start and the break, we can keep going for a little while, like normally we would cut here. But let's let's not, you know, let's That's not cut down uh, the precious uh, time with Brian for our dear viewers. Let me know if you do need to go, though. But uh, no. but yeah, sort of to my last question about like the making of an asset. Like, what part would you personally say that you enjoy the most? Is it the designing of the character? Is it like making them flow in certain animations, or like what is your favorite thing to do in the process? Um, that's kind of a tough thing to answer directly. Partially because uh -huh. like sometimes. I like the design of the character, mm. and then sometimes I do like a couple variants of a design, and the one that I gets approved, and then I have to make it animate in a mm. way that I end up liking it, and right. then it's kind of like salvaging it in that part of the process for me, right? right. It's like other people might, might like the design, but then it's like, um, not my favorite. What does it? Yeah, yeah, it's not my favorite, but I'll work with it, right? And then, and it's like, but then by the end, I usually make it something that I love. Oh yeah, these are the bonus silly characters yeah. I did, the Metroid and Hell yeah. Halo. Um, so cool. <laughs> it's my take on Super Metroid, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I just, I, it's a, such a treat to get a like look under the hood in this process because I've like personally been like thinking about it, like how does this work, and, like. How how does it all come together? I think it kind of like it made more sense to me when I saw you move the head of that uh, one boss character, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, so it's like rigged in a, like in module, so you yeah. can, so you can like move them around. It's all broken into parts. Yeah. Sometimes I would like let's say where's his walk? I don't know if I did it properly for his walk. I probably didn't set it up right, but there's a, a set of frames for when it turns one way versus when it turns the other way, mm. just so you can see that it actually kind of turns in 3D. So I've drawn variants of the head as it rotates, yeah. right? And then I can use those throughout the animations if I want. So later on, I can, if I wanted to turn its head slightly, I can do that. And right I on. can, so you kind of draw those sets, but you do you treat it frame by frame. But sometimes you're using existing assets from previous frames, right? I mean, you'd so, be, you'd be not stupid dumb. not to. Yeah, right? yeah, you'd be stupid not to. Yeah, you've already done the work. Yeah, exactly. You take advantage, and there are often times where I end up redoing it for a frame, anyways, even though I had drawn it in a previous thing. But you're it's like, oh, just uh, probably if you look at my my Photoshop layers, it's an absolute mess for anything it's just I, I work the way that I think and it's like hundreds and hundreds of layers of just shenanigans if you that's that's, scroll down the side that's like establishing job security right make it so much of a pain in the ass for someone to take over for you that you know <laughs> they, they just will never consider yeah exactly that's that's the trick right right on I think we're we're gonna move ahead a little bit I don't know <laughs> I don't actually know because I haven't been so much involved with the development of Star Renegades, and honestly, I'm not super involved in any development aspects of the game. But like, what is what has your experience been in working with Raw Fury? And again, like, if you haven't had to deal with us all that much, if you have, if other people in the company do that, it's fine to just you know say we're nice or we're not nice or whatever. But uh, like, no, no, I've, I've had been? to work with Raw Fury. Like, it's kind of cool how. I've got to work with more and more of the team as the time goes on, right? Mm. Like, obviously, work with Kresha a lot on um, the porting process for the games. Work with, I've worked with all of the, the main people. And, you know, the, you guys have been really great. Uh, I, I have nothing but positive things to say about all the interactions. You know, um, sometimes there's, there's crazy things. There's one time where Microsoft was giving us, like, a ridiculous amount of booth space for... Mm for uh, Gamescom, 
and we had like the shortest deadline I've ever had <laughs> to get all the assets for them because Microsoft was demanding it, but it, it was really Microsoft, not Raw Fury's fault. But right you know, on. it's like, get this stuff now. It's like, uh, what until, do we do? Until it's all together, everyone's like, oh, could go now. No, but it was, even that was great. Like, it's been a real pleasure getting to know the teams, you know, and having them help with editing the videos and just, it's been an absolute blast. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed working with everyone that I've worked with at Raw Fury. They've been super responsive. They've done really good promoting the games. Um, you That's know, so awesome. Especially, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's been such a treat. Because obviously, again, I've not been here since the start, but like, it's been such a... Star Renegades has definitely been like a highlight of like joining the company. Because like, it's, oh, such, really? it's such a... Yeah, it's like it's such a cool project. And, you know it's clearly being well received like n- needless to say like most most things i encounter about it are highly positive and that's always just a joy with what i work yeah. with yeah well i mean there's there's specific things i should i guess early on we pushed for i mean people always confuse this because they think game frame rates but mm. so in games you would normally see your 60 or whatnot but in pixel art like most super nes games run at like five to ten frames per second right for not for how move it moves across the screen but for how it uh because it would scroll at 60 mm. right but the, the amount of frames it would actually have would be 20 or i would tell you 10 but we actually did 20 or so for everything so it's like literally almost double the frame rate of most traditional pixel art games that's probably why it looks and, so incredibly smooth well it's very fluid for that reason right you get yeah, you you do get some really high frame rate animation for pixel art, and I mean it's kind of like the the Disney standards twenty, right? They call it being on yeah. ones versus being on twos, which is ten. What's well, twelve and twenty four? But it's the same, right? Just, but yeah, was it right on? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just so beautiful. I can't like. Oh, now now we're in Slack. I'm like, oh, I hope you're not. Oh, this is. I just have like a big that's just right. my personal message board to myself yeah, so yeah, I have yeah. just in my my personal message board if I need files I just literally that's send so myself smart. I send myself files that I might need so that I can grab whatever um, right, a little, emotional little, art I did for the game little shout out to uh, Atomic Crops there as well <laughs> amazing Oh yeah, yeah. That was. I, th- I think you guys canceled that program. You were doing for a while. The these are like all of my sketchbook pages on Star Renegades when they load. Um, oh. Just like taking pictures from my mole skin, all the drawings I had to do for the characters from all sorts of sides. Um, but the key art, other stuff. Um, sorry, I was just trying to find. I have a big section with all the backgrounds. Oh no, no worries. Oh, this kind of. This is kind of cool. This is like uh, the beautification pass on some backgrounds. So this is like mm. the first version of it right here. Right on. And then uh, the updated version of it. So it's yeah. you can kind of see how backgrounds evolved over time as I finally got a chance to go in and, and polish them at the end of the process. That is so cool. Um, lots of stuff like that. Uh I just, yeah, at the very end of the game, I did a, a polish pass on virtually every background in the game, which was uh, is nifty. You can see the original and then, then the final kind of version that got in the game. Um, yeah, I mean, it was this this game was really my baby uh, from a visual standpoint. I've been working on it for so long. Um, yeah. And. It, you know, it was kind of interesting being able to kind of just draw whatever backgrounds came to my head. And that was, right you know, a, a funny thing because it's like, you know, when you when you play something like Octopath, a lot of the backgrounds yeah. are just there. Like, I love the game, but like you play the background and it's just like, mm. this is a desert. This is an area. And I feel like I really went to make sure that every place felt interesting. You're like, like a where place. the heck am I? Like, yeah, where right. is this? What's going on here? Why is there this robot thing here? Why is this <laughs> thing happening? What like, is it reaching just for? That, yeah, just that funny kind of stuff. It's a, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm legit broken record here, but it's like, I I've honestly never seen this particular background, and it's just like blowing me away how gorgeous it is. Oh, there, there's so many backgrounds. Like I've been dying to animate this one forever, but it's uh, 
it's not in the game, but it's, this is like a rough mock-up of it. Maybe it will be one um, day, who knows? Yeah, I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, let's see if there's any of the other gifts. This backgrounds. Where is it? Those are my overclocking stats. <laughs> get 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 Star Renegades to work yeah. with Brian's personal yeah, yeah. overclocking guide. Yes, yes. Overclocking, <laughs> Ryzen overclocking guide. That'll help you. Um, sorry, where is it? I can pull one second. I'll just pull a couple gifts up. You can ask oh. me a question. I'll get some gifts, some backgrounds, because I'd right. like to see that. We'll do some uh, some low hanging fruit questions that I have. So, single favorite thing about Star Renegades? It doesn't have to be your own art or anything in particular. Really, really like just first thing that comes to mind. Your favorite thing about the game? Oh, probably. Oh, I, I actually really love what Gary did with the battle system. To be mm. honest, it really came together in the end. I play a lot of JRPGs growing up. And I love Grandia and other games, and it really gives that feel that I missed from those, but you really have to think about it. So it's like, oddly enough, I'm playing Sweet Code in 2 right now, mm. and because it's regarded as like one of people's favorite JRPGs, right. but I'm finding the battle system quite basic. Mm. They have like a hundred and some odd characters, which makes it interesting because there's so many characters, but the way they function is pretty close to identical with just kind of unique animations. There's some differences, but it's, uh, yeah. Um, but I, I really love what came together with the battle system between Peter and Gary. And it is truly they did unique. a lot of amazing work on that. Um, and that's probably like playing the game and actually just getting that kind of joy. And then Matt's particles and animations, I think, turned out really great bringing it all together, getting those big slam feelings. It's amazing seeing kind of your own work come to life yeah. through the hard work of someone else. Yeah, right on. Um, and for me to not have to worry about that was amazing because, oh, uh, I think maybe one of the last background things I'll show you is a sneak peek at our upcoming DLC. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Um, heard it here first, folks. Just for fun. And it's simply because I literally spent forever torturing myself on this sky. So I thought I might share it. But... I like literally frame by frame hand animated this pixel art cloud sky shenanigans on this mirror like background. But Ooh. I thought that was a pretty interesting thing. That that yeah, was that one of the more torturous things that I'd worked on. Wow. That's <laughs> and I guess I guess we sort of covered it, and it might be the same. But we got the question in chat, how long does a background take to make? I don't know if that's the same as oh for God. a character or not. No, it's not. Um, it's really random. Sometimes I feel really inspired, and I already have the image in my head. Sometimes I flounder because I just didn't, I didn't, hadn't resolved it in my head yet. Mm. So it's like, it's hard to even to know because I did... Some backgrounds I, I whipped out in like an insane amount of time. And it really depends on how much animated mm. content there is. Right so on. one of the two of the backgrounds that are probably the most torturous, I can kind of show you them in the video, mm. but there's the train and there's the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can there's imagine the train, the train being and there's rough. the elevator. Yeah. And initially like high, when I did the... Animated. Initially when I did the elevator, it was all... Like it was more Unity math than it was mm. art because when it was completely 2D, it was just calculating how parallax should behave. Right. Um, sorry, let's see if we can find the train. This is, you can whip through some of the backgrounds here. Uh, where's the train? I think it's right at the end. I think, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the train. Oh, with the lighting and everything. So, but the train is like, I, I wish I could show it to you in Unity because yeah. it's all shenanigans, it's 100% <laughs> shenanigans visually it's like as soon as you turn the camera a bit you're like oh my gosh that's what's going on here it's just nothing but nonsense it's a theater um it is it's like a stage play with animated elements making it look alive I mean, that's what but, that's what it is often in video games in general don't, yeah don't look behind that, a curtain that, the transition getting that transition to work at all between that and the field was yeah. like huge pain in the butt i can Having imagine it, yeah, but anyways, like that's that's one of them. Like um, how 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 long would you say? Me, yeah. Oh, they could take me anywhere from. It really depends on how much of a pain in the butt there was. The very low animation mm. ones, maybe a day, right. well, a day to draw that's and a day new. to get it in Unity, 
and then the the big pain in the butt ones. The biggest ones took me like up to three days, maybe. That's still way shorter than I thought. I thought we we're gonna say like maybe like two weeks. Oh, uh, no, I'm I'm pretty good at assembling it in Unity pretty quick, provided I can get Unity to load. Um, <laughs> we have established that you're the fastest shot in uh, no, the West. No, no. There's someone faster than me. I just haven't met them yet. <laughs> I know there's someone out there that's way faster than me and that make me look... look I don't know. Like, I don't know, man. This, I'm, I'm not that great. I'm an okay guy. I, I just do my best to work. I work with a great team that supports me. I wouldn't be able to work anywhere near as fast as I could if I didn't have Peter always filling my queue with things to do. I gotta agree with Chad. Yeah. Like, this just sounds like a really hard and humble flex. <laughs> no, no. Like, honestly, it makes a huge difference. Peter, like, I've never had someone queue up lists the way that he does so that I can just work outright. And right that makes a huge difference where you don't have wasted time. You can just kind of work and work away. Right there's on. so many backgrounds in the game that we haven't even shown yet and stuff. And I'm curious. And hopefully we get to build up the game more and more as time. Yeah, and I hope like there's so much more. Like we're gonna start wrapping up here. I switched I I switched back to her camera now so we don't see her screen yeah. anymore. Uh but like hopefully we can just do a part two of this at some point because like this has been so interesting and like there's obviously so much to see. Like and uh, I think every everyone in chat will agree that uh, we definitely want more Brian. So okay. I I thought let's just quickly and I hope we covered that question we got earlier in chat. Sadly it disappeared from my view when uh, we rehosted. So if we didn't, sorry, we'll save it for part two. Uh, but we're quickly going to run through the last questions because we're already on overtime now. So, okay. something that you would like to add to the game going forward. It doesn't have to be something that you think will be added to the game, oh. but it, your personal... No, there's, there's like three characters. There's one character that's literally all over promotional materials that is not in the game. Ooh. And I... Exciting. Well, I specifically on the, the Chrono Trigger promotional image that i did uh right. it's an homage to chrono trigger yeah. there's a character there that i love that makes me happy and it's not in the game and there's a couple of characters like that that's fucking awesome that aren't in the game and that makes me kind of i'm like i i even went out of the way to draw them like high detail in my sketchbook or like put them out there several times and they that's so awesome. they're not in the game and that's kind of funny that they're in materials but you can't actually play as them right on but do you think they might show up in the game i don't know i hope so there's also like we'll a series see. of aliens where i literally on my free time just drew like six alien concepts and then i was like here put them in the game somewhere and it, <laughs> they're not really in there but they exist and i'd love to see them in the game at some point in the future right on so you you heard it here first folks hashtag release the brian cut Spam no. every spam everyone, no. especially me at Raw Fury. <laughs> the right decisions were made. It has nothing to do with that. I that. just you asked me a question, I have to answer. I I hear that. All right, and the, <laughs> la the last question could be a tricky one. So feel free to either be lengthy or short. But if you could make your dream game, what would it be? Oh my gosh! So a different. Uh, game. I have been pitching this kind of stuff. I've always wanted to make... I feel like there's never been a game that feels like Evangelion. Mm. Where, That's probably true. Where you have this kind of like scale and real like... There's a, a huge creepiness around the enemies that mm. kind of permeates everything. And then there's like these weird angels and then there's like this really... I'd love to work on a story-based game with lots of lore that had mm. that kind of feel, that it, but as yeah. a game. And that's that mood. kind of like my mix would be like something like, I don't even know how to word it, but it would be kind of like the Persona-esque elements of Ooh. Persona, but not in a school setting, because I'm kind of done with school settings, but with something either like Front Mission-esque or something. That would be my dream game, where you have... That's such a kind good answer. Like I have like a really robust story, really unique characters and that, but that's, that's, that's just me. I would work on that and be so happy to just make really interesting scenes. That is a perfect answer to wrap up the stream. 
Brian, <laughs> this has been such a treat, technical issues aside. But man, yeah. thank thank you so much for joining us today. People, on, tell us where we can where we can find you. Oh, uh, I mean, the place I'm probably the most active is Twitter, just because it's fun to do weird things from time to time. I do got to get more on Art Station and stuff. I have profiles and everything, but they're just so out of date. Um, but I'm mostly just making art. And in general, uh, so yeah, follow me on Twitter uh, at Brian Heemsker. I'm pretty sure it's just my name. Spell my name correctly, and you'll find me. There you go. You might even be uh, get away with writing just Brian if you add Star Renegades. Yes. Yeah. You <laughs> well, just, you well, click on Star Renegades. They post my stuff all the time, so you'll find me there too. And so do we at Raw Fury too. Raw Fury too. And obviously, as my tongue is starting to twist to the point where I can't speak. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to this third episode of Meet the Furies, my second episode. As we explained last week, this show is sort of a, like a two-part show where every other week I, Zeke, uh, social media manager, voice of Fury here at Raw Fury, will meet with uh, one of the developers that we work with and talk about the game we've worked on together. And every other week we'll have Andrea back in the House of Fury in Stockholm talk to one of our lovely colleagues about what they do. So, you actually won't see me in two weeks, because I'm moving back home from Japan then, and I won't bother you with the details, but we'll be back in, I think it's three or four weeks, with another guest. Brian, thank you so much for hanging out. Everyone go buy Star Renegades and enjoy this fantastic art. Buy the art book too, God damn it. <laughs> oh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, um, right really on. Great Thanks for my team. They yeah. an amazing team to work with. Obviously, shout out to everyone over at Massive Damage for making this fantastic piece of video game that I think we can all, Raw Fury and Massive Damage, be very proud of. Right on. And at that, I will leave you famously horrible at cutting myself off to actually <laughs> end the stream. But I'm uh, I'm going towards the button. You guys uh, are not going to see us in just a 